What does your praise sound like when you know you serve a living God? What does your praise sound like when you know you serve a God that is alive and well? Did you talk to the Lord this morning? What does your praise look like when you know you serve a God that is alive? Are you aware that somebody wanted to kill themselves this week? Somebody came in here struggling, but we thank God. Somebody say, thank God. We serve a God who lives. Life is worth the living because he lives. Life is worth the living because he lives. We praise God for what has transpired already here tonight. I praise God that we won't be here much longer, but I know that God has something that he wants to say to us to kind of just seal what we have encountered and what we have experienced. To God be the glory. We thank God for the worship that has gone forward. Can we put our hands together for the music and the praise team? God bless you. I don't want to belabor the time, but I just want to go quickly to Genesis 32. Genesis 32, I'm going to read from the Message Bible, starting at verse 27. And it says, and it said, what's your name? And he answered, Jacob. And the man said, you can keep playing. The man said, but no longer, your name is no longer Jacob. From now on, it's Israel. You've wrestled with God and you've come through. I'm going to read verse 28 again. But no longer, your name is no longer Jacob. From now on, it's Israel. Because you've wrestled with God come through. For the next few moments, I want to just talk briefly on the topic, show me your ID. Show me your ID. God, we thank you that your presence is already, that you are already in the midst. Speak now through this word. May somebody just leave this place knowing that you indeed make all things new. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for all these things. Somebody shout amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, musicians. You can stay. I may need the handheld because it keeps going in and out. Here. Okay. Praise the Lord. I don't mind waiting. <laughs> I don't mind waiting. Oh, you know it. Don't mind waiting on the Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting on the Lord. Y'all ready? All right. As a singer or a musician, your identity and branding are an important part of your act. And many artists, many artists will change their name to a stage name to reflect a new identity. Steve Lynn Hardaway Judkins changed his name to Stevie Wonder. Alicia Aguello Cook Changed her name to what? Alicia Keys. Peter Jean Hernandez changed his name to Bruno Mars. And Melissa Vivian Jefferson changed her name to Lizzo. Calvin Cortazar Brodas Jr. We know him as Snoop Dogg. All because they wanted a new name 
to reflect their new identity. I hope I have a church that's going with me tonight. And I came all the way from Kansas to remind everybody here tonight that you may not be an entertainer, you may not be a rapper, you may not be somebody famous, but because you are a child of God, God has given each one of us a new name. Who says amen? God has given each one of us a new identity. Paul said to the church in Corinth that if anybody is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and behold, all things have become new. Somebody shout new. And I'm wondering if I'm preaching to somebody that needs to be reminded tonight that you have a new identity. Am I preaching to anybody that needs to be reminded that you actually have a new name? Because I don't want us to go home after all the singing, all the tears, all the worship, forgetting what has taken place tonight. I don't want us to forget the encounter with God that has changed us tonight. There's nothing like the story of Jacob that reminds us of the significance of our new name in Christ. So from this story, I want to just quickly lift up three points that's going to reveal to us what happens when God... God changes our name. The first thing I want to leave with you tonight and then come back tomorrow is that when God changes your name, your new name will break you. Your new name's going to break you. The text says that a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. And when the man said that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. Jacob did not get his new name until after the wrestling match. Jacob did not get his new name until his hip was broken. And scholars say that the hip bone is often the strongest bone in our bodies. And I was watching, I was watching this UFC fight last week. Yes, I watch wrestling every now and again. Don't box me in. I was watching uh, a UFC fight last week, and this guy, uh, he goes by the name of Boris, took out his opponent in less than three minutes. He won, watch because he knew how to break his opponent down. He won because he knew how to break down the places in his opponent that were strong. I'm going somewhere today. I'm preaching to somebody who needs to recognize that claiming your new name, uh uh-huh, claiming your new name will have you in the greatest fight of your life. Don't miss me, brothers and sisters. It's going to be a sweaty fight. It's going to be a gruesome fight. It's going to be a challenging fight that will stop at nothing to break the strength of the old you. That's preventing the new you from winning. There's an old you that has you losing at a life that needs to be broken. Radical responsibility right through here. Radical responsibility right through here. There's an old you, who am I preaching to, that's holding you back from your purpose. There's an old you that's holding you back from your calling and your true identity. There's an old you that undervalues your worth and your greatness and your power and your authority in the earth. There's an old you that puts up with people pleasing and seeking the approval of others more than the approval of God. There is is an old you that engages in relationships that you know you have no business being in that causes you to completely lose yourself there's an old you that's addicted to pride that's addicted to self-sufficiency that's allowing users and abusers to walk all over you and take advantage of you. I'm coming for everybody tonight. There's an old you that believes the lies that have been planted in your head by the enemy and by racism and patriarchy and sexism and all of these things. And God is saying, look, I have a new name for you, but I'm going to have to break you in the context of relationship. I'm going to have to break you, not to destroy you, but to upgrade you. Did you hear what I said? Not to destroy you, but to upgrade you. Do I have anybody in here that's bold enough to say, I don't know, I I don't expect everybody to say this, but do I have anybody in here that's bold enough to say, God, break everything in me that's holding me back 
from living up to my new name. Do I have a witness? Do I have anybody that's willing to say, Lord, you can break everything on the inside of me that's holding me back from my new name. Break it out of me, Lord. And can I encourage you while your hand is up, you are going to survive the breaking process. Lift up both hands. You're going to survive the breaking process. You're going to survive the struggle of what it looks like, of what it took for you to get a new name. You're going to survive it. You will survive the renaming process. The old you is not going to win, but your new name will prevail. When God changes your name, it's going to break up some stuff. It's going to break you. Not only that, your new name changes your reputation. Okay. Your new name will break you, but after the breaking, your new name changes your reputation. The Bible says your name is no longer Jacob. That is your name no more. From now on, it's Israel. In other words, God is asking Jacob, what are you known for? <laughs> and my Bible students in the house, you know that Jacob's name meant heel grabber or deceiver. God made Jacob name himself as a liar. God made, made Jacob name himself as a deceiver and a cheater, but he doesn't stay there. Thank you, Lord. Oh, man. He doesn't stay there. Uh, he said, your name is no longer that. Your name is no longer petty. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody. Your name is no longer gossiper. Your name is no longer messy and drama filled. Your name is no longer victim. Your, your name is no longer liar and deceiver and cheater. Your name is no longer fornicator. Who am I talking to tonight? Your name is no longer adulterer and alcoholic and drug addict and porn addict and poor and a pimp and a player and selfish. That's not your name anymore, honey. You will no longer be known as those things. But I've given you a new reputation that comes with this new name. Notice, and I need, need y'all to grab hold of this, that God giving Jacob a new name does not change his uniqueness. God giving Jacob a new name changes his reputation. I've given you a new character. I've given you a new position. And I hope I'm preaching to somebody that's grateful that we serve a God who knows how to rename us. I'm so glad that we serve a God that knows how to name, rename his people. Your new name is child of God. Your new name is friend of God. Lift your hands and receive it. Your new name is justified. Your new name is redeemed. Your new name is bought with a price. Lift your hand because your new name is delivered. Your new name is forgiven. Your new name is overcomer. Your new name is more than a conqueror. Your new name is I've come out of great tribulation. Your new name is chosen by God. Your new name is citizen of heaven. Your new name is born of God. Your new name is fearfully and wonderfully made. Your new name is victorious. Come on in here. Your new name is the head and not the tail. Your new name is joint heir with Christ. Your new name is God's workmanship. Your new name is saved by grace. Somebody shout yes. That's your new name. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, I got a new name. I got a new reputation. That's your new name. I'm out your way. Because when you have a new reputation, finally when God changes your name, your new name is going to bless you. <laughs> your new name is going to break you gonna give you reputation your new name's gonna bless you before Jacob could cross over into Jabbok into the land of blessing he had to get a new name and I'm so glad that the blessings attached to your new name aren't based on your capabilities 
the blessings attached to your new name aren't blessed based on your strengths or your gifting, but your new name, your new name gives access to blessings because there is a name that is above every name. Ah, uh, you missed it. <laughs> Your name gives access to blessing because there's a name that's above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Do I have a witness? Can I talk about Jesus as I make my way to my seat? Because Jesus took on the name of a criminal so that we could have a new name. Jesus took on the name of a sinner so that we could have a new name. Jesus took on the name of slave so that we could have a new name. Jesus took on the name of brokenness so that we could have a new name. Jesus, somebody shout Jesus, became the lowest of the lowest of the lowest of the low so that we could have a new name. Jesus gave up his name so that we could have a new name. Jesus gave up his identity so that we could have a new identity. So because of Jesus tonight, you have permission to rejoice in your new name. Come on in here. Because of Jesus, you can now celebrate your new name. Because of Jesus, thank God for your new name. Somebody ought to say amen. We got a new name tonight. Listen, when I go to pick up, when you go to pick up a package at the post office or FedEx, they're going to ask you to show, you, show them some ID. When you go to the library to get a library card, the librarian is going to ask you, show, show me your ID. <laughs> when, you, when you go to the bank and you want to withdraw money or check your balance, the teller is going to ask you to show them, show them some ID. And when you go to rent a car, or you got to show them some ID. And you go to the hospital, you got to show them some ID. And when you go down to the West Palm Beach Airport, I don't know about y'all, but you got to show them, you got to show them your ID. Do I have a witness in this place? Because people want proof that your new name matches the documentation that they have for you. People want proof, I'm preaching to somebody, that you are who you say that you are. People want proof that, they, that you are who you say that you are. So I may not be a FedEx worker. Thank y'all for having me tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. I may not work at the airport, but I do, I do know this, that because of Jesus, because of what Jesus has done for you, do I have a witness that you don't mind showing your new ID because you recognize that Jesus is the one that changed your name. You have no problem saying that this is who I am. This is who I am. It matches who I am because of my new identity in Christ. You could go ahead and show off your ID because you have a new name in Jesus. Behold, Jesus makes all things new. Somebody shout new. Somebody shout new. I'm so glad that we serve a God who's in the business of making things new. Somebody shout amen. amen. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Because you're in the business of changing our name. There may be somebody here that just wants to thank God for their new name. They want to thank God for the opportunity to start over. God, we bless you tonight. And if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Thank you, Lord. Forward. Let's sing that together. You make all things new. Sing. You make all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you forward if that's you why not just stand as you sing it because you make all things new yes you Yeah, forward. Come on, make that declaration one more time. Sing. You make all things new. Yes, you make. And I will follow you forward. God, we honor you tonight. We bless you.
bless you tonight. Just like Jacob, you said, no longer will that be your name. May that be true for each and every one of us tonight, that we could move forward with our new name tonight, knowing that you have changed our name. I pray for anybody, Lord, that is feeling like they've been held back, feeling like they can't move forward. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you release them even now to walk in the reality of their new name. I pray, Lord, for the person right now who feels like they are in the middle of a breaking process. Help them, O oh Lord, to remember that they will survive it. You just want to break some old habits and some old mindsets so that we can walk into a new thing. I thank you, Lord, for the reputation, the new reputation that we have as a result of following you. And God, I bless you today that you are blessing us as a result of our new name. Keep us is my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm new, I'm new, I'm new, I'm new. I'll see you tomorrow.